Hey, and welcome back. Just doing this series of films, looking at the science of UAPs is a game changer. For the first time, the science community are taking UFOs seriously. Great people in science are actually looking at the problem. And one of them is Avi Loeb. <music> professor Avi Loeb is the Frank Baird Professor of Science at Harvard University with a background in astrophysics. And he's decided to put together a team to run a project called the Galileo Project that hopes to solve the riddle of what UAPs really are. This is their published goal, to bring the search for extraterrestrial technological signatures from accidental or anecdotal observations to the mainstream of transparent, validated and systematic scientific research. The Galileo project will gather a rich data set for better scientific explanations for novel interstellar objects with anomalous properties and for potential new atmospheric phenomenon and in some instances terrestrial technology explanations for many of the presently inexplicable UAPs. And why is he doing it now? His statement on the background to the project is also fascinating. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence report to Congress on June the 25th, 2001, mentions many unidentified aerial phenomenon. Their report states, a majority of UAPs were registered across multiple sensors to include radar, infrared, electro-optical, weapon seekers, and visual observation. That was taken as a scientific validation that the military and the US government knew that these objects were real. But the government also admitted in their report they didn't really know the true nature of what UAPs are. So Avi and his Galileo project have set out to solve that question. Okay, stop it there. I'm now going to tell you a secret about finding UFO information. A lot of people don't realize that your country limits your access to data. Just look at this. This is a Google search for the term UFO in the US, in Italy, in Serbia, and in France. The search results were very different. Some countries are far more open at sharing data and others are quite closed. So to get round of that issue, I use NordVPN. This is how it works. What is a VPN and how does it work? All about it in this video. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a tool that encrypts your internet traffic and hides your IP address and virtual location. What's a VPN used for? A virtual private network significantly boosts your online privacy and security. Thanks to its encryption, third parties cannot spy on your online activity. Even your internet service provider cannot see what you do online. A VPN also allows you to overcome internet censorship. All your traffic is routed through a remote server, so you can access websites restricted in your country. Because I like NordVPN, they're sponsoring this video, and I'm happy to recommend their service to you. So I can pass on two amazing discounts using this promo code. Firstly, 30 days free trial to see what you can find in the World Wide Web. And secondly, 
a massive discount. What's not to love? What I'm going to share with you today is some answers that Avi Loeb gave to Mick West in a recent interview on Mick's channel. I think it's fascinating why the science community now has changed its mind and decided to take UFOs seriously. It's so wonderful to have a project that might solve the issue of what UFOs are once and for all. So firstly, what is the scope of the Galileo project? The Galileo project is basically the, uh, the scope of it is trying to establish the study of, of unidentified objects uh, whose nature is not known in our atmosphere um, to study it scientifically, meaning to collect evidence uh, using instruments that we have full control over. So, for example, past uh, testimonies, uh, you know, do not stand up to the scrutiny of science. You can't write a scientific paper based on what people tell you. You can't say this person said that and, and submit the paper for publication. That's not acceptable. Uh, what you need is to rely on instruments that collect the quantitative evidence. Um, and so that's point number one. The second is the instruments that were used in the past uh, on reports uh, on uh, unidentified objects uh, were not optimized for that purpose. They were, for example, a jittery camera in the cockpit of a fighter jet. I mean, that's not a scientific experiment because you don't know exactly how the fighter jet uh, maneuvered and uh, you don't know what kind of jitters were introduced to the camera during that flight. And um, what you want is to have full control and full knowledge of your experimental setup. And that's what the Galileo project wants to do. And then collect as much data as possible using uh, uh, telescopes uh, connected to uh, cameras that feed the data into computer systems that filter it for objects of interest. And I should say, I mean, people would ask, okay, what's new about it? You know, we have telescopes operated by astronomers uh, looking at the sky all the time. Well, the answer is if a bird flies above a telescope that astronomers are using, they just ignore it. We will look at it and see that it's a bird. That's very true. Astronomers aren't looking for UFOs. They're focused on their science using precious telescope time. So why do you think the science community ignored UFOs? The reason it was not done in the past is very simple. Sci the science community, scientists, ridiculed this subject and didn't take it seriously. At the same time, there were people out there uh, making statements that do not make much sense, including statements about violating the laws of physics, you know. And, uh, and then the scientists said, you see, the, there is no point in us getting engaged because it makes no sense. So the two communities basically created the status quo where not much was done. And then when the report came to Congress, at that point, it looked to me as if it's, you know, it's very intriguing for us to look into it because Former CIA directors Brennan and Woolsey would say this is a serious matter. Former President Barack Obama said this is a serious matter. These are real objects. So if the politicians in Washington, D.C., you know, and, and military personnel say they don't understand the nature of some objects that appear to be real, at that point in time, I say, let's move this subject away from the talking points of politicians, military personnel, to the realm of science so that we can clear up the fog and resolve it once and for all. You know, this is a subject, we are not in the dark ages. Emerging from that dark age into this enlightened time excites me. What else do you think the Galileo project might discover? I should say the Galileo project has two components. There is a second component that has to do with interstellar objects, objects that came from outside the solar system and enter the solar system, like Oumuamua, for example, mm -hmm. that look weird, objects that do not match what we are used to in terms of looking at comets or asteroids. And we just want to figure out their nature. You know, just like you walk on the, on the beach and you see most of the time rocks and every now and then you see a plastic bottle. So we want to look if there is any plastic bottle out there that enters the solar system, just to make sure yeah. that, you know, that we understand the, what is coming in. And I should say, even if we find something uh, like a, a hydrogen iceberg, like some people suggested for Oumuamua to explain its weird properties, you know, that's something we've never seen before, something that was not produced in the solar system. We know that. And 
you know, it's, it should be very abundant because Oumuamua was the first interstellar object that we discovered. So if we understand objects like Oumuamua to be hydrogen icebergs based on future evidence, that will be important for science because it will yeah. imply that there are nurseries that make objects we haven't expected that are very common and we will learn something new. So my point is with new evidence, you always learn. It's always beneficial to collect evidence. This project should get the blessings of all scientists. What made you break away from the reluctance of the science community to study UFOs? Interestingly, the justification for me was the fact that the um, ODNI, the, the UAP report to Congress, um, uh, had a classified component. I didn't mm. see any of that data, but it was presented to the White House. It was presented to many officials in past administrations. And when CIA directors Brennan and Woolsey and when former President Barack Obama say that it's a serious matter, that they saw the classified component and it looks convincing, what I infer from that and these are serious people, you see, that I trust. What I infer from that is that there is a mountain of data that we don't have access to where the images are much crispier mm -hmm. than we see, okay, the public sees. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't seen that data, but that's what I infer because, you know, these, if these people saw the same fuzzy images that the two of us saw, then forget about it. It's not convincing. But the fact, the way that they spoke about the subject and include, that includes also Bill Nelson, you know, the director of the, the NASA administrator yeah. uh, uh, who expressed uh, the, his wish that scientists would look into the data. And, uh, you know, I, I say these people saw the classified component, this part of it, and they talk about it seriously. So that's sufficient. That's a sufficient threshold for me to say scientists should collect new data uh, so that it's not classified, op open data, and analyze it in a transparent way so that we get a clear understanding of this, of this UAP phenomenon and, and, uh, and, and move on after that. If, if it happens to yeah. be a natural phenomenon, I have not, no quarrel with it. You know, whatever the data reveals, we will uh, show to the public. And uh, now one thing to keep in mind is uh, it's a mixed bag. It's probably a mixed bag, right? Uh, I mean, there were lots of uh, reports in the past. Most of them probably have some mundane explanation, as you uh, argued on many occasions. Uh, and that would be completely fine. It's The point is, we need to show that all of them, at least those that we can detect, uh, have mundane explanations. And, 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 and some of them may be exotic explanations, you know, like rare phenomena in air, in the atmosphere, that would be fine with me. But even if there is one object that is of extraterrestrial origin, you know, that would be major news, right? So what we want is to have a high enough quality of data on one uh, that looks really unusual. And I don't care if 99.9% .9 of all the objects we find uh, appear to be made by humans or in the atmosphere and so forth. If we do find one that seems to be uh, clearly not human made and clearly not natural within the atmosphere of the earth, that would be of a, a, a very interesting. Yeah, you uh, only need so that, one. That, that would motivate me to continue the search, you see. Why do you think that the US government think that UAPs are real? So I would say that they would not come out with an admission that they cannot figure out the nature of these uh, objects unless the much better data that they have in their possession, which is not mm. a release to the public, indicated that they should make such a statement. Now, I don't know how good mm. the quality of that data is because I haven't seen it and I'm not interested in seeing it. I'm just saying, given that the, the most conservative organization uh, that we have, which is the government, comes out with a statement like that. Given that, you know, academia, which is a blue sky <laughs> organization, right? It's, it's supposed to be entertaining all possibilities, open, be open-minded. Given that the most conservative organization tells you there is something we don't understand, academia should respond and say, okay, we'll figure it out for you. Here we are to serve the nation, trying to figure out something that the government doesn't figure out. And is the military hiding stuff? I, I will mention an anecdote. Um, 
that you may not, not know about. Um, so uh, after Oumuamua was discovered, uh, um, I noticed that there is uh, a table, you know, a, a website where they list uh, meteors from the past that were detected by US government sensors. And uh, right. they list the uh, numbers about those, I mean, the velocity components of those meteors without giving error bars. And I asked my student, mm. uh, Amir Siraj, to look into the, that table and see if there is any object moving faster than you expect for meteors originating from the solar system. So if there is any object that could have originated from outside the solar system um, in the meteor data that was publicly available. And he found in 2015, there was a meteor that moved much faster uh, than uh, expected for an object bound to the solar system. And we wrote a paper about it and said, uh, here is an example for a meteor that could have been interstellar in origin. And by the way, it was reported in 2015. So it predated Oumuamua. And we wrote a scientific paper, submitted it to the Astrophysical Journal letter, uh, letters, and um, it was refereed. And then the referee came back and said, uh, we don't believe the government. There is no error bar on this measurement. Therefore, this paper should not be published. Mm. And so I said, okay, um, I know some people, you know, I, I chaired the board on physics and astronomy of the National Academies, and there was a member of the committee that, uh, oper you know, works in Los Alamos and, you know, behind the, the fence, so to speak. And I asked uh, him whether it's possible to get any uh, limit, upper limit on the error budget so that we can quote it and say, you know, the error is less than something and therefore this object must be from outside the solar system. So after many months, he came back and uh, provided the needed uh, statement. So we put it in the scientific paper and then the referee said, oh, that's not good enough. Uh, how do I know that I should trust uh, this person that gave you that information? We want uh, to see the data before we accept this paper for publication. So, so then the editor came up with a creative solution. He said, uh, let me find a referee that has uh, clearance to look at the actual data that was obtained by the government and tell us whether the data is reliable. And he couldn't find such a referee. So the paper was left in limbo. Uh, and uh, it's really unfortunate because, um, you know, we are talking about a purely scientific motivation for getting the error budget on a measurement from 2015. And of course, the government has an issue because it will say something about the sensors were, that were used. That's why, you know, from this experience, uh, I learned that it's best to collect your own data. I don't right. want to look at any data because there are layers and layers of bureaucracy that sure. prevent us from having access to government-owned data. In my next film, the startling story of when a real extraterrestrial visitor appeared in the sky and how its presence was taken as a threat by Space Command. Behind closed doors, a possible invasion by little green men was discussed. And the whole of the US science resources was thrown at the mystery, including the final mission of Arecibo, which always was a military space radar. Stay tuned for The Interstellar Visitor, a hidden history. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.